Yossi, thank you so much for coming here. For anyone who doesn't know, this is his first interview in English, only his second interview. And only four months out, that means there are current operations happening right now that Yossi gave an order to. You don't have to respond to that. I don't want to be killed and nobody else here wants to hear something that you'd have to kill us for. Iran. So there are a couple of things that happened in Iran in the last year or so. There were three different nuclear facilities that happened to explode or be hit by a bolt of lightning or something. There was this guy, Mohsen Fakhri Zadeh, the chief nuclear scientist who was killed by some sort of science fiction remote control gun. Um, there is also that nuclear archive heist thing that also happened. All of these things, the Iranians and foreign sources say that uh, this happened from the Mossad. On the other hand, Prime Minister Bennett, Defense Minister Benny Gantz say, we are worse off now with Iran than we've ever been before. They're up to 60% uh, your enrichment with uranium. So what is your legacy at this point? Well, thank you very much for having me here. I mean, that's a, a great opportunity to celebrate Jerusalem Post for this very important event. Um, strange things are happening in Iran <laughs> uh, that you've reported uh, that I cannot uh, make or have any comments to. But nevertheless, to the, to the actual things that are happening in Iran today, I have a different view. I think that in the end of the day, Iran till today, 2021, does not even close to acquire military, nuclear, or any nuclear weapons whatsoever. Not closer than it was in the past. And this is because of long-lasting efforts that were done by some forces around the world. <laughs> and, and I believe that this kind of an statement that uh, Iran is better off today than it was in the past, to my knowledge, based on the intelligence I read uh, a few months ago, that was the last <laughs> time I did, I'm, I've lost my license reading intelligence, um, is, uh, is not true. I think that the Iranian facilities are less, ca less capable of doing things as they did in the past. I think that they have less capabilities entirely as they had in the past. I think that they have less intentions, not less intentions, but less um, foreign support to what they're doing, less than they had in the past. And there is one, I believe, very important message that I'd like to deliver. Maybe this opportunity is probably the right one to deliver. I want to exercise two things with you. One is, in the end of the day, Israel, like we said always will have to defend itself by itself. And if worse comes to worse, and Iran eventually will take the wrong turn towards a military bomb, Israel will have to act. Do we have the capability to do that when we don't have bunker buster bombs? I think that we'll have to develop capabilities to allow us to be absolutely independent, doing what Israel has done twice, unfortunately, before in Iraq and in Syria, we all remember 81 and uh, the Razur in Syria, I mean Iraq and Syria, both nuclear sites that were taken away. I think that they should not sleep quietly in Iran knowing that we have or not having this kind of capabilities. But I definitely believe that we have to develop that. Um, and this is one, a very important remark. I think the second remark is that if regaining power at what we call the path to the JCPOA, to renew the JCPOA that was signed and then eventually President Trump exited from the JCPOA some, some time ago, 2018, after the archive was brought into their intention too. Um, I would say that the agreement or the nuclear deal, as often we called it, has to be eventually completely refurnished, completely, but not only in one different uh, subject. It has to be completely refurnished and completely done. If it isn't, would we have to act? If it hasn't been um, taken the direction that I believe should be uh, the right thing to do, I believe that Iran will keep on having their capabilities as they have them today to enrich even 
high level of enrichment, like 60% today, maybe higher sometime in the future. I think that all these letters that present the nuclear deal, like uh, JCPOA, C stands for comprehensive. The agreement is not comprehensive. It has to be comprehensive. Comprehensive means that Iran does not have the ability to develop itself to the level of a threshold nation. And this is where they want to go to. Under and with the agreement of the powers, this is something that the State of Israel could not accept. Last Iran question. The IAEA itself has said that they are blind, that their cameras are gone. How worried do we need to be that some of that 60% uranium is being hidden right now? A former defense minister and IDF chief said that it's easier to hide that than anything else. I think that the IEA, as I often refer to what Mr. Grossi has to do, is as the supreme court of the world's nuclear capabilities, he has to be today very tough, and he can be very tough since. And I can refer to the Prime Minister's last uh, speech at the UNGA, the United Nations General Assembly, just a few weeks ago. And he said, these three sites, Turkuzabad, Marivan, Tehran, all these sites that we've learned about from, from within, the heist from 2018. That from you, the archive. That you it, was, it was mentioned there. We didn't, do, we didn't know about these sites before. I think that Mr. Grossi should take these under consideration when allowing the nations to sign eventually or not signing the future JCPOA unless Iran comes completely clean about their deeds in the past and today a new agreement should not be signed, and he, Grossi, General Secretary of the IEA, should not allow that. Moving into politics, you uh, are a little bit more public uh, these days. What do you think of the current government? Do you think they'll last the full four years? I don't know. I think Ayelet Shaked have just uh, <laughs> answered this question. Okay. Um, there seem to be some people in the Likud who are worried about you running for prime minister of the Likud at some point in 2024 when there's a cooling off period. They seem to be leaking some stories in the papers recently. Would you run for the leadership of the Likud? Or a different party? I don't really know what they're worried about, but you better ask them. I mean, I'm, I'm not in politics. What about? I'm, I'm in business today. I'm sure that you've. No, soft, that, soft Bank Israel. Absolutely. Soft Bank Israel. But in 2024? SoftBank Israel would be greater. <laughs> okay. You've been to the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Sudan, all of these uh, countries. Do you think the Saudis will normalize ties with Israel and when? Um, well, well, first, I believe that, that we're celebrating the Abraham Accords. And yesterday, I mean, uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, was here. Uh, receiving a kind of an um, honor uh, ce ceremony celebrating his doings and together with the Trump administration and Ambassador Friedman and others, um, I think that was one of the greatest um, diplomatic moves on the Middle East ever. I think it is uh, vitally important to our existence, not, not only referring to all these directors that we hear, CEOs, of international companies and local companies uh, to strengthen our economy. It helps um, pushing the evils away and working with the good guys, working with the good states. I hope that this wave will continue. Signing peace treaties with four nations simultaneously or very close to simultaneously was for me a majestic thing. It was a less, not less than a a um, miracle or a beautiful move uh, for us Israelis in, in, in the Middle East. So I definitely hope, I pray, that this move will continue. It's not modern not to be in good relations with the State of Israel any longer. If you're not part of it, something probably is wrong with you or the other threats that are not allowing you to be in touch with us. Modern nations have to be in touch with the State of Israel today. That's why we're so innovative. Thank you. That's why we believe that we have to bring all the smartest people around the globe working for or with us shoulder to shoulder on our technologies. And I truly believe that the light from the State of Israel reaches everybody. And it is known by all nations that there is a lot of gain, not only to us, but mutual um, interest could be completed if we are 
in relations with the others and then with us. I'd love to stay up here all day. 30 seconds, Rona Raj, should the Prime Minister have revealed it, the Mossad operation, or not revealed it? Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here with <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yossi Cohen. Thank you. Thank you.